everyone. Hello everyone. This is Becky Edwards from Purpose Driven Motherhood. I'm so excited to be doing my very first Facebook Live with you. And I, it's fun to see some friends on here. Hi everybody. How are you doing today? <laughs> so I'm excited to share with you um, a concept that is really powerful. It's really, really simple, but it's also really powerful. And this concept has been life-changing for me and it can be life-changing for you as well. So I'm going to introduce it with a little story and it's from the Old Testament in the Bible. In the Bible, when Moses was in the wilderness with the uh, Israelites, there was a period where they were getting uh, bitten by poisonous snakes. And of course, that's terrible. They're, you know, dying because they're being bitten by poisonous snakes. And the, and, uh, the Lord told Moses a solution. He said, I want you to um, make a, bra a brazen serpent, so like a snake that is made out of metal, and I want you to put it on a, on a staff and raise it up. And I'm gonna, I want you to ask your people if they will look at it. And guess what? Whoever looks at the brazen serpent, the, God promised Moses that they would be saved, that they would not die. And you know what? Some people believed him. Some people said, okay, I, w I want to live. I don't want to die from these poisonous snakes. So they, um, they looked. They looked at the snake, the, po the brazen serpent, and they lived. Well, guess what happened? There were some people who refused. They just refused. They would not look at the snake, and they um, thought it was too simple and too easy. They thought, there's no way that could work. Looking at a brazen serpent, that's not going to save my life. And so they missed out on an absolutely life-changing opportunity to live. <laughs> they, it was kind of a bad choice. But they did not believe that something small and simple, like looking at a brass serpent, could have tremendous results. Well, it did. It did. And it was their choice whether to take advantage of that small and simple choice or not. So I'm going to tell you one more story that happened to me the other day. <laughs> so I was enlisting the help of my twin 14-year-old sons to help me get uh, do some organizing projects. And we're we're working on that a little bit, uh, a lot of the days this summer, not every day, but, and um, I was, I was outside in my um, fridge, my garage fridge, and I noticed in the bottom of the fridge, there were some, there was a bag of old apples. I thought, oh, let's get rid of this. This is gross. So I asked my son, I brought it just right back into the kitchen, right by the, where the rug is, by the door, and I said, would you please bring this to the outside trash? And as he's standing there ready to leave, we realized there's a hole in the bottom of this bag of old apples. So they start falling out onto the kitchen floor. And suddenly I realized that there are rotten apples. Ew, gross. There are rotten apples that are so rotten that when they hit the floor, it was like splat. And oh, it was so gross. <laughs> and I just laughed. I mean, of course I ran and I got a bag so we could, you know, contain the hole so the apples wouldn't start wouldn't keep exploding on our floor I mean they were landing on the rug it was really disgusting and and I realized something I realized I have made changes in my life small and simple changes in my life that have transformed me inside to the point where I respond differently to little emergencies like that I'm pretty sure that a few years ago a handful of years ago I maybe would have had a come apart. I maybe would have stressed out and freaked out and maybe, you know, done this kind of voice like, ah! or maybe yelled at my child. Oh, I hate it if I've ever done, you know, anytime I've ever done that, I always feel bad and we never want to yell at our child, right? And the cool thing was, I didn't do any of that. Now, I will admit, I yelled saying, oh, that's so gross, you know, <laughs> I did yell at that, but it was funny. The whole thing was really funny and I laughed and I laughed and I just cleaned it up and um, I honestly threw away the rug. It was a very inexpensive rug, like four bucks. And I was, that was way worth getting a new rug to not clean up nasty, slimy apple nastiness. So that really taught me the power of the little bit. That is the concept I want to share with you today is the power of the little bit that when you 
create small and simple habits in your life that are just little bits here and there that they can have tremendous power in your life. Like Moses's people had power to say, they, they had the power to be able to be saved. Their lives were saved if they used a little bit of the brazen serpent. And for me, the little small and simple habits that I've incorporated into my life that have transformed me and made me a better new person inside, I respond differently to stress. I really do. And it's super fun. It's super fun to watch the, um, the results of the, the power of the little bit. So I want to talk to you today about your power of the little bit. Now, you probably can imagine that there are different things in your life that you can use this principle, the power of the little bit. I want you to just think for a moment, what are some little tiny habits in your own life that have brought big results? And um, I would love for you to just ponder that for a minute. And while you ponder that, I'm going to share a few ideas. And then I'm going to share an invitation with you at the end to, um, to act on this. So there are several areas that I'd like to talk about that you can use the power of the little bit. The first area is with relationships. Now, um, I, I'm going to be honest. Yesterday, when I came home from the gym, I did not have my best mother moment. I did not. My daughter, who's 17, had been borrowing my car because her car's in the shop. Well, we call it the teenage car because it's whoever's a teenager gets to use that car. And it was in the shop. So she's been using my van for several days. And I got home from the gym just in time for her to leave to her school and work. And um, I realized that she was starting to make my van look like her car, which is pretty cluttery. <laughs> and I don't love that. I don't love a cluttered car. I love a nice, tidy car. And so the first thing I said, I walked into the kitchen door and I, you know, ready to hand off the keys to her. And instead of saying something like, hi, good morning, how are you? I love you. And giving her a hug. I didn't do that. Mm -mm. I said to her, so-and-so, you need to clean out the van. <laughs> That's the first thing that came out of my mouth. And then I went, oh, that was a, not a, not my best mom moment. And I actually felt bad about that later in the morning and I texted her and said, you know what, I want to ask your forgiveness. That's the first thing that came out of my mouth and I saw you first thing that day and that's not, that's not my, that's not what I want. I want, I, let me, if I could do it over, here's what I would do and I kind of described this in a text that I would say, hi, I'm so happy to see you. Good morning. How are you? I love you. And, and, um, and I said, will you please forgive me? And she said, of course, mom, you know, texting back. And that helped me realize the power of the little bit really does affect relationships. It really, really does. Sometimes we think it, to build a relationship, we need a, a big event. We need to go camping. We need to go on vacation. We need a big fancy date with our husband. But the power of the little bit, the little tiny interactions we have make a big difference. I'll give you another example with marriage. If you made a decision for just like the next seven days to greet your spouse, your husband or your wife, with like a big long hug. I'm not talking like half a second. No, 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 that doesn't count. Well, okay, the power of the little bit would say that's better than nothing, right? But I'm telling you, there's something about like a 10 second hug that just sort of melts out the stress. Even 20 seconds would be even better. Melts out the stress, just helps you like form this like energy connection with your spouse that you just, it's almost like you have this energy umbilical cord between you that goes, oh, yay, we're connected again. I love it. It feels so good. And even better, if you want to turn on a song, like just a nice slow song and just kind of sway back and forth while you're doing that nice long hug, that would be even better. But just a nice long hug, even once a day with your spouse can be a, a little bit that can give a big result, that can help you feel connected, help you be more united, help, more, help you have more harmony, help you feel like you're in love more. It's, it's an awesome idea. So that's the first area is relationships. Now let me talk about our home. I'm sure we've all had this experience where we didn't put our car keys in the place where we've where we should, <laughs> where we put them somewhere else or someone else puts them away in a, a random place. And oh my goodness, we like stress out. We look for 25 minutes. We ask everybody in the house, do you know where the car keys are? Oh my gosh. And we get all like uptight because we know that we're late for the next thing we need to do. And what that can result in is we might yell at our child. We might get all, you know, just 
high strung and, and lose our peace. And we also might like lose money or lose an appointment if we're, if we miss it or are too late. Sometimes we have a penalty for that. And that's a little bit, right? The solution to that is really a tiny, tiny solution. And that is to create a habit. Well, first of all, create a location that you always put your keys. It could be in a certain pocket in your purse, or it could be a certain drawer by the garage door. It could just be a small little spot and the habit would say, every time I walk in the door, I never put the keys anywhere else but that spot, that one spot. And oh my gosh, is that not a small and simple habit that will bring great results? Yeah, great results because you will no longer have to search for your keys and lose 25 minutes of your day every time you lost them. You won't have to get mad at your kids and you won't have to be late everywhere. That is a small and simple habit. Good idea. Um, another anal another um, adaptation of that idea as far as your home is to create a habit of, of some other little thing that you tend to leave out on a regular basis. Like, mm, what's an example? Well, I'll give you an example that, that is a struggle for me. Um, paperwork is overwhelming for me, even though I'm a professional organizer, I, it still gets the best of me sometimes. It's overwhelming and intimidating to me. And so I too often go to bed with a messy desk and that would be a small and simple uh, power of the little bit that if I would just take like three minutes, three minutes, that's not that long, three minutes just to tidy my desk before I go to sleep. Oh, can you imagine how yummy that would feel to wake up to this nice clean space? And also if I wrote, you know, a little to-do list of what's the next things to do at my desk, that's a small and simple thing, a really tiny um, power of the little bit, but it makes a big difference. It makes my head feel clear, my mind clear, my, my energy feels cleaner. Ah, Because have you noticed, maybe you're like me, thing order creates thought order. Mm -hmm. And the other way around can, some, can be true as well. Thought order or order in your mind can also help create thing order. Kind of cool, cool little concept. So you can use the power of the little bit in your home. Now let's think of another area that you can use the power of the little bit. Um, you can use it in your relationship with God. If you are a person who has a connection with God, have you noticed if you go very long without saying a really good prayer or um, searching the scriptures, studying the scriptures, it's not very long before you feel pretty distant in your relationship with God. It's, and it kind of feels sad. You just, your heart feels this emptiness that can't really be filled any other way than besides filling that with God's spirit and his connection and his presence in your heart. And so the power of the little bit would say, you know what, a short, um, a short prayer that is really deliberate and focused is way better than skipping a prayer. If all you have time for is a short one, that's way better. I often will say a prayer in the car and, uh, you know, I don't close my eyes <laughs> when I drive and I think Heavenly Father is totally cool with that because he wants me to stay safe and, you know, that's all good. And sometimes we'll say family prayer in the car. Sometimes we will, sometimes we'll say a personal prayer in the car. I really like praying in the car because a lot of times I'm alone or if I'm with my kids, we'll do the family prayer. But when I'm alone, I really like the opportunity to just have a conversation with Heavenly Father in the car and just kind of talk about things like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that you helped me with this and that. And, and thank you for giving me this inspiration, these ideas and solutions. And I have some more questions for you now. Blah, blah, blah. And it gives me a chance to think and ponder and listen. And that's the power of the little bit. It's not this big, long thing. I'm already driving. It's just using my car time differently. I, kind of, I decided a long time ago, I hardly ever turn on the regular radio. Because I don't have control over what comes on. And, even if some of the songs are good and uplifting, the ads are often not. And many of the songs that I used to think were good, once I started paying attention to words, a lot of them are about adultery and, you know, just a lot of lust and selfishness and <laughs> things that I don't want to put in my mind. I want my mind filled with good, positive, happy stuff. So that's another power of the little bit is to be a little bit more careful about the media that you put inside your mind and inside your heart are the is the music you listen to is the are the movies that you watch the websites that you visit the magazines you look at 
even at the grocery store checkouts, I, I just have to like, whoop, look away. There's like all this immodesty. I would call it soft pornography is really what it is. There's a lot of soft porn at the grocery store checkouts. And unfortunately, it's at the children's love, eye level. So I try to, okay, everybody, look away. Come down here. Look at the candy bars. You know, look at something else. Um, because that's a small and simple power of the little bit that can help keep our mind and our thoughts and our heart in a really happy, good place instead of in a lower kind of ugh, kind of yucky place um let's see if i had another idea for yes i have one more idea i want to share about the power of the little bit with imp improving your relationship with your god and that is a particular little tool that i've shared lots of times about about reading the scriptures getting more out of the scriptures from one tiny little little bit habit it's just tiny it's tiny tiny but oh my gosh it's powerful you ready do you want to hear it okay so this is what it is you find a colored pencil that is a special color to you you like the color but you haven't really necessarily used it in your other marking of your scriptures so for me i chose orange i think orange is a fun happy color and then what you're doing is you're going on a treasure hunt for your very favorite verse in that chapter. And sometimes I can't choose my favorite, so I choose like, you know, two or three, and that's totally fine, no big deal. But can you see that that is a tiny little bit of a habit that can really shift how your scripture study goes? Just think for a moment, how could that change your scripture study? How could that bring it up to the next level where you're having to think harder, think more, and engage your mind in what you're reading you are having to decide, ooh, which one means the most to me, this one or that one? And you're having to um, kind of interpret, why does that matter to me? What does that mean to me? Hmm. And if you want to even take this little bit habit a step further, this treasure hunting for your favorite verse further, then you can take just a moment and write a, uh, a little summary of that verse in your own words, in your own words. So I'll give you an example. Um, we, my family, my children and I have been memorizing a scripture in the New Testament, and I'm not remembering the reference at the, at the moment, but it's about, the, what it's about is that when a person will do God's will, then it gives them a testimony that it is God's will. So you have to do it in order to be converted to it, if that makes sense. So this, this little verse, that's a powerful little concept, don't you think? And so what I could do is I could mark that in my orange and I like to, you know, kind of shade it in in my little orange color pencil. And then I could put out in the margins something to the effect of do God's will, then converted. You know, just some little little phrase that helps me know uh, what that's about. And so as I'm flipping through my scriptures on another day, as soon as I see an orange verse, I go, oh, that's one of my favorites. I kind of own that one now because it's like in my heart and I love it and I adopted it. And then you look in the margins and you see your own little, your own little uh, phrase, your own little summary of that in just a few words. It doesn't have to be super long. And you remember, oh, that's right. I love that message. Oh, so good. So good. So that is a small and simple power of the little bit that can bring tremendous results in increasing your connection to God's word in the scriptures and increasing your connection to God himself because he is the giver of those words right so there you go so my invitation for you is I'm can I'm asking you now to think in your mind of one small power of the little bit habit that you can create in your own life it could be something to um and maybe ask yourself or say a little prayer and say Heavenly father what is one little bit that i can change right now that will make a really good difference a positive difference in my life and and boy if you get a little answer to that follow it that's a power of the little bit that will always always benefit your life is to follow the inspiration you get Woo yeah even if they don't make sense even if they're inconvenient following inspiration is a super awesome power of the little bit to include in your life. So just say a little prayer. If you're a praying person, if you're not, just ask yourself and say, what is, what would be the most helpful thing that's just small and simple that I could do in my life 
right now. And you may, you may, something may come to mind that would in, improve your marriage, that might improve a relationship with a child or a friend or a, an extended family member, or that may improve your relationship with God or how you pray or how you study your scriptures. It may improve your health. Um, it may be something that improves your home and how organized you are or how you spend your time. So my invitation for you right now is to write it down. I don't want, in fact, I know what I want you to do. I want you to type it in the comments below this Facebook Live. I want you to go ahead and type it in so that you have made a commitment in your heart because as soon as you write it down or type it in, it anchors it into you and you're way more likely to do it. Yes, you are. You know this, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's the power of the little bit right there. You write down a goal. It's no longer a wish. It's an actual action. And you're way more likely to take that action. So I hope that that little training has been helpful to you. The power of the little bit. And I want you to continue to think in your life, what are some other ways that I can use the power of the little bit? If I'm not doing scripture study because I'm overwhelmed about it, Five minutes a day, that's a little bit, but oh, it can be a big difference when you have the spirit in your heart, because mm -hmm. you can react to rotten apples with a laugh instead of with ah, freaking out and yelling at somebody. <laughs> so the power of the little bit is so true. It's a true concept. I invite you to use it. And just for showing up today, I would like to offer you a bonus for any one of you who might still be interested, if you have not yet signed up for my five-week class, uh, it's a uh, call, let me think, <laughs> Overwhelmed to Organized, Don't Let Clutter Bury Your Dreams. And it is starting really soon. It's starting next Thursday, July 7th for five Thursdays in a row. It will be recorded. So if you need to leave on vacation or whatever, no worries. You, we got you covered. You'll be emailed the recordings. It's in Layton, Utah, which is Northern Utah, or you can watch it live online. Either way, totally lots of good options there for you. And the early bird special is done as of several days ago, but I would like to offer you a bonus. Now, this is a class that's worth $297. It's actually, in my opinion, it's worth a lot more than that. The content that I have, the experience that I have, the toolbox that I have, and um, the passion that I have about this stuff is uh, I'm just, I'm just going to pile on the value. You will just be loaded with value as you come to this class. And the, um, uh, just the experience that I have as a professional organizer, as a life coach, as an emotional release worker, and as a presenter, um, I just have a lot of tools that I'm super duper excited to offer you. Not only of how to put organ order into all these different areas of your life, but ways to help change our thinking and our emotions because that is often what gets us stuck when it comes to putting order into our lives, our thinking patterns and our emotions. So we have some tools that we're going to do to help us move forward in all these different areas. So here's what I'm going to offer you. If you would, would like to sign up for my course right now, it's $147, which is a screaming deal for five power packed classes such a good deal, especially that I'm going to give you for free the recordings. That's awesome. And today I would like to give you a $30 off coupon, $30 off. So what you do is <laughs> in about three minutes after this video, because I forgot to create a coupon code before it didn't even occur to me, I'm going to create a coupon code. And then you go ahead and go in and register. The link is above this video. You go to that site and you register and where it says coupon code, I'm just going to have you write 30, just the word 30, and that will give you $30 off on your class tuition. Oh my goodness. It is such an awesome class. I'm so, so excited. And I love that we already have well over 80 women signed up. It's going to be so much fun. Those of you who can come live, I love that you're coming live because the energy in the room is just going to be so delicious. It's going to be so fun. You're going to make new friends. You're going to have this awesome support group. I will create a Facebook group just for our class so that you can, if you, if you choose to, you don't have no obligation, but if you choose to, you can, you know, put before and after pictures and share your success stories and say, oh my gosh, I didn't lose my keys in two days. Ah, and we'll all cheer you on. It'll be so fun. So I invite you to do these two things. First of all, write down and put in the comments below 
one, one uh, small and simple habit, the power of the little bit that you are going to incorporate into your life that will bring you to the next level. And the second thing is, if you haven't already, if you've not already signed up for my class, go ahead and click on the link above and check it out. See if it feels right for you. If it does, register. I'd love to have you join me. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments below as well. Now, I hope you have an awesome Independence Day weekend, and we will talk to you later. Bye.